I want to get the upper and lower hulls together and there's not many parts in this step to get this to happen uh, it's just some internal parts here it's very curious what they get you to do obviously you need the two uh, periscopes that just have a uh, plastic part a clear plastic part and then a, a solid one that just slot in like this and actually that's just a press fit not even glued on and they give you a couple of latches that go underneath the hatches now you're never going to see all this unless you open up the interior so unless the hatches are open or something. So I don't know why they've included that. I mean, the periscopes make sense. So that's easy enough to put in. But the next stage is the bow machine gun. I'll just move the hull out of the way. And uh, this comes in several pieces. So we've got uh, the gun itself has got the upper plate. It's got the barrel molded in and a side part of the receiver just snaps in there like that. And then you've got the ball that it sits on so it can swivel or the sleeve I should say this is the sleeve that goes over the barrel and then the internal locking one which has got that little lug which fits into the lower part of the hull and then the outside cast bit now because I've got this version with the detail upset you get this lovely brass barrel with a curling jacket which is a nice tight press fit we might have a visitor soon my cat's coming around the top of the, the workbench um, so yeah, that just requires, because obviously, let's look at the detail when you compare the both. Oh, upside down, Miss Jane. If you put it that way, okay, you obviously get the 3D detail, that nice separate cooling jacket instead of just the indents. And then the, uh, the end of the barrel is quite nice there. So what I'm going to do is cut off. It's the same dimension. Unfortunately, the way they've, they've designed this, it's really not captured there. I'm going to have to... Um, Use some quick setting super glue or epoxy to get it to stick in there after I take the plastic barrel off. So that's what I'm going to do next and then assemble the gun and I'll show you how to put it in the lower hull. Time to put the bow machine gun in. So I've attached the, um, the brass barrel. It's, it's a butt fit so you've got to do a really uh, clean join there with your super glue. And in fact, when I did the pre-assembly I found that you actually don't need the machine gun assembly. I mean, really, you're not going to see the inside of it so really only need to assemble. Um, don't even need to modify the gun itself so if you want a spare 30 caliber to put on the turret um, don't even touch these parts just include the, these two ball halves here which I've glued together and that's all you need and the brass barrel so you get an extra they do give you a spare barrel so I can um, I can modify these back if I want to to make an extra 30 caliber but anyway what we need to do is put this this ball socket just sits in there nicely like that so I'll just give it a little bit of glue it's, I thought it sat in this notch, but actually, actually the, it's the next notch below. So this gets captured in there, like so. And then we put like that. That's a nice press fit. And then on the outside, hopefully that'll stay in. I can keep it in camera. On the outside, we need to put the cast sleeve on. So that just fits over the barrel. So, famous last words, how far in do we go, so it's, this fits a bit vague. So I think what I need to do is let that glue go off first on the internal ball, so while I'm doing that, see how it's come loose, because it is a very tight capture, so let's just get that in there again, maybe I'm doing this the wrong way, well, um, that's how I think it goes. So while I'm doing that, I'll just glue in these bits, which you'll never see, but I'll use anyway. So that's all glued in, and um, I have decided to only install the barrel, because you won't see anything else, so I'll keep the receiver and um, maybe I'll buy another brass barrel for it and have another machine gun on the top. That just slides in there like that, so pretty easy. It's not designed to be workable, so we'll just um, glue that all on, unless I've got that wrong, but it says glue, 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 so that's what I'll do. Alright, so that's pretty much it. We've got the, the periscopes uh, there, that'll be easy to mask, just a simple um, straight bit of tape there on them, and I can re get ready to put the lower and upper holes together, and uh, then I might even skip forward and build the... Um, the main turret bits because then I can have it sitting on the shelf looking like a Sherman. So switching to the overhead camera because it's too big to keep in the bench shot but there it is 
all done. Well, no, this is just a dry fit, and the dry fit is very, very good. I can't see any problems. However, there were two questions I had to ask myself uh, before doing this, and as you can see, I haven't put any of the back detail on, and you may also notice that I've had to do, and I'll just zoom in so you can see this better, this whole, this this is the section that's in, in query, query, although the, the front also has to be addressed. Um, this back plate doesn't fit quite right. It's, there is a small gap here and here, you'll probably just see that there is a line of putty there, which is fine. Um, I don't mind that because there is a weld seam here and if you look at some of the reference photos, man, this is this is nasty stuff. <laughs> um, that weld seam that, that Olaf Kit have put in, the models in there, it's, it's a little bit too uniform and a little bit too good. And there's a few welds around these back plates here. Again, they're a little bit small, a little bit undersized. So I filled in these holes, but I'm not doing the, the best job in the world because I'm just going to cover them with a, a much thicker uh, this is to sort of recess this weld seam here, so that that that'll all be just very easily accessible. Put some um, extra detail in there, and then the other thing is this exhaust splitter, uh, which I've had to. Oop, there we go. Shows you how tight everything is put in there. So before I talk about the exhaust, okay, the fenders. The uh, the instructions tell you to put these fenders on first on the upper hull bits, and then put them in. You don't need to. They just. I mean, you could see this before. That was all just dry fit snicks in there like that which is good because there's four ejection pin marks you need to remove so I'll leave them aside fill them with super glue and get them sorted and then talking about fit so the exhaust splitter here uh, it's quite good it's only four parts the end plates and then the two halves this seam I think I need to fill so I'll put some Mr. Surfacer in there and um, clean it up I mean they put all the attachment points on that curved surface so it was nearly impossible to get rid of them all smoothly so I'll go in there, get a, um, where have I got, this is always handy, get a little bit of a sanding sponge on a, on a lockable tweezers and you just go in there and that's how I do a, a curved, nice curved profile with your sanding stick in there. So, um, but the other side had left a nasty seam and I wasn't sure, I couldn't find any, any photos, was that supposed to be a gap there? So I've filled it, uh, that wasn't that hard to do. But this isn't workable, they've keyed in the, uh, the notches here so that's not workable. And Have I got that the right way around? Uh, yep, so that just slicks in there. But it's actually because there's a little bit of warpage in these large plastic parts, as you can see, it doesn't fit. So, fit, well it does fit, but you just need to push it. You just need to give it a bit of a push. So the way, it, so it's really hard to do <laughs> when this is all in. Okay, so the way I would do this, and this is why I wanted to, to do this dry fit first, oh, there we go, I've got it, is I would actually put this in first on the lower hull, then put the lower hull to the to the upper hull. So um, that's going to be real easy to, to glue together. And then the last question is, well, what about the fit on the bow there? Now, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Andy Hobby, Hobby Headquarters one has a gap below this row of bolts, whereas... This is a one piece, so the Isle of Kit one is a little bit better. Um, and there isn't supposed to be a gap between here and the upper hole, obviously, but if I just press that together with my fingers, it disappears. And with a little bit of glue, again, it will disappear. Now that leads me to another question that I haven't figured out. Do I need to put in these pieces either? So maybe I just need a quicker look at the instructions and get those parts off, see, and I, see if I need to put them in as well, because I want to redo the um, surface texture here on this um, transmission cover because I believe the particular one I'm going to do is a Chrysler built Sherman and they had some really chunky <laughs> uh, finishing techniques on this on this cover so just let me have a look at the instructions first so having a quick look at the instructions uh, they do tell you to put these fender infill pieces look like a piece of angle bar and this sheet metal here uh, first then attach them attach the whole caboodle to the front thing but no you don't need to you just plonk it in and there in and out which is good because like the back fenders um, they've got some uh, really let's have a look really nasty two yep I have one because you can have two for twice the price big injection pin mark big big one there little one there so um, not that are they in yeah they're <laughs> recessed so I have to fill those in as well so yeah you don't have to do that which is good, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this together, which is going to look really boring on camera. Uh, so I'll just do that now, and that'll end this part of, well, putting the major parts together, and then we might start adding all the, 
the little things. So as you can see, I've skipped ahead quite a bit here and I've assembled the major parts of the back of the lower hull. But a few things to note, okay, you've got these workable uh, tow hook thingies here. Uh, you've got to be careful getting the right uh, width parts for those hooks or uh, flanges that go in. And of course, as you can see, you know, there's a, not a lot of weld detail or, uh, or basically just basic weld detail. So I'm gonna have to add some weld detail to there, to this major hook here. And as I explained before, I think with the, um, the bad fit of these lower levels, that's fine too. Uh, there's some molded on weld detail here, but I'm gonna cover that up and it's actually not recessed. It's actually uh, raised welds. So that, that whole area, it's, uh, it was really easy to assemble. All these parts fit really, really nicely. I've got the splitter plate in there, but I think I need to do a little bit more filling on it. So I'll just turn this over and we go out to the front. Just had to put these few parts at the front here as well. They fit no problem, but again, they're going to need um, some filling with weld seams, just like everything else on the tank so my but my philosophy is what i'm going to do is just assemble everything and then i'll go back and add all the extra detail that i want to do so for example i'm going to have to add oops zoom out miss jane i'm going to have to add some uh, drainage holes here or add or just try have to drill some drainage holes here okay and then what i've also done the major construction is finished on the rear deck i've put in the two engine plates these were super tight very very tight fit uh, I had to file the edges of, of the front here and along the hinges and I've still got a small little, it's not quite even, which is actually what I wanted. I wanted it to be not perfect fitting uh, if, you, if you get my drift because I prefer to have not a perfect fit for armour. I think it works better that way. You know, it looks like someone's just slammed the engine doors shut and haven't actually shut them completely. So the next stage to do uh, and what I want to do before uh, finishing, or well, what I want to do to finish this video segment is I want to make all the parts for the um, for the hull. So the hull's together. Now we have to add all the parts. And where I'm going to start next, because I've got the detail upset here, is with the Pioneer tools. So all of these tools, we've got hammers, we've got shovels, we've got um, you know, attitude adjustment devices, is with my little detail upset um, you look at the uh, in introduction when I did the review with this particular one you do get a huge slew of photo etch there's the stuff for the turret which I'll explain much much later but for this one uh, yeah they what they give you and that's what's the most important not just these little brackets but the latches that's really stand out in 116 scale so these um latches I don't know what you call them latches um, I can't think of the word anyway I need, I'm gonna put these on all the pioneer tools um, these ones here, these that hold the parts to the hull, and this is one of the benefits. One sixteen, you get to use much bigger uh, photo etch than you do one thirty fifth. Uh, there are some parts of the, of the photo etch that I don't, I won't be using, like for the um, the front headlight guards and so forth. The actual styrene is just thick enough, or can be adjusted with a with a sanding stick that. I don't need to be bending photo etch everywhere. I mean, that's one of the things you don't need to use every part of the photo etch. Okay, that's some of the other parts for the um, mainly for the for the 50 caliber. But there's also some uh, labels here to go around the fuel cap, so I'll be using those. There's a little bit of chain wire as well. So let me get stuck into this. I will at first just do these um, these tools, add some extra bits as you can see there. And uh, the rest of it is quite easy to do. Just there's just a few parts to be putting on the on the top there. Uh, but I will show you how I do uh, this back here and the fenders and so forth. So let's get into it. So I've got these Pioneer tools on and the clasps. As you can see, I use plastic. You know, I didn't use PE strap there. Uh, there was this the edge of the sledgehammer. This was nice and thin, so that was easy to cut off. But yeah, just the basic sort of photo etch there. And I put on a few other little parts some handles and so forth, but although I think with the stowage that I've got in mind, I'll probably have to take these handles off, but that's okay. Uh, now, the next thing to do, it was going to be putting these fuel caps on, um, but the extra part of the detail upset gives you these little chains, so I've, I've put on, oh, there you go, I've already attached one. <laughs> uh, but before I do that, I was gonna do it at the end, If I think I said that in the last update. What I need to do is there's supposed to be a drain hole here and I believe here as well and on the opposite side but the problem is and I'm just looking for the photo etch set so I can show you I should have done this before I started filming where is it here it is okay um, I want to put on these 
these labels the, where it says, you know, gasoline, diesel oil, water and so forth. The problem is if I leave them off, there's a little in, indent there. I'll have to spring this around so you can see it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it just in there. There's a little indent there and on the other side as well. Uh, the thing is, if I put this all in and then start drilling later, I'm probably going to pop that off. So I'm going to drill them first and put them on. And then the next stage, which I'm starting to do now, is this back plate which involves a lot of ejection pin mark filling, okay? Maybe you won't see them, but I just like to fill them in. There's, these are just the fenders, so the underside of the fenders have got ejection pin marks, both of them. And then it took me ages to work out how do I do this back rack? And, um, you know, everything lines up, everything fits well, but I wasn't getting the right geometry. I was like, does that go that way? The, the instructions don't really that make that much sense. Um, and these little flanges here with the wing nuts on them, uh, if you can see the wing nut there and also yes of course ejection pin marks i thought that the part went like this sorry i knocked the camera and fits in there lovely or does it go like that okay because all the hinges line up nicely but no it actually goes like this okay and then there's a little bump stop behind here that that keeps it uh, away from the main hull from the back of the hull uh, the problem is of course these these very shallow ejection pin marks which you don't really need to fill because if you've got stowage, and I tried it with a jerry can, if you're filling up this rack, you're never going to see them, but I've, I did it anyway, so it only takes five minutes. Um, yeah, so that needs to go there like that. So then I worked out, aha, I had to look at some reference photos. I can't put them up. I think they're copyrighted, but I'll leave the link below. I had to work out, well, where does, how does that wing nut wing, wing nut wing, wing nut fit in there? And how does that all go? So I'm just going to let this go off and... There's the underside, so it's got the gun cleaning rods, and that goes in like that. So it just dry fits, and that pushes in there like so. And then there's a couple of um, flanges that just attached to there, and that's that. So that's basically the back of the um, the hull. So let me just clean up those ejection pin marks, and I might glue these fenders on and get them underway, and then we can uh, get stuck into these all well, these fuel caps, and then move to the front of the tank. As you can see, I've now installed the filler caps on the four major areas here, 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 and here. And that was after drilling the holes. Let's see if I can uh, tilt, tilt this up. There's a few parts in there. See those drain holes there? So I advise do those first because what happens is as you drill as carefully as you can, as you go through the fairly thick plastic, it will actually scar in there. So if you had that photo etched piece of... Uh, the label there, it would just get popped straight off and you might even um, damage the filler cap. So I've done that, I've added only a few other parts. You've got the, the large tow hooks here at the back which have to have weld seams added much later. And I've constructed that back storage uh, rack. <laughs> I think I've got a sprocket inside the hole there. So that went together well enough after I realised I was reading the instructions wrong with these um, two straps that hold them on. I, I checked the reference photos going, oh, they've got the instructions wrong. And it's come, you know, oh, I love kit, you've stuffed up here. And I was like, no, nah, I actually put them on wrong way around. And the other thing I've done is just these, if we can stop that bloody sprockets rolling around, those, um, these brackets here are for the uh, fenders. These don't fit too well. Uh, they have a, a little tab about that long in between on each end, just cut one off. Uh, and then you can slot the one into the hole first and then just hang it down onto the onto the, the fender. So the next part to do is the front here. That's all I've got left to do for the hull. The headlights and headlight guards, um, these hatches, I need to mask up these, these periscopes, a few other minor details and it's done. However, the main thing that I'll concentrate on in the next update is to show you how to modify the gun travel lock. When this kit first came out, when I did a review, everyone said, oh, it's got the completely wrong travel lock, it's a post-war one, you know, and with the tracks and it's got the early turret, the 76 wet turret, blah, blah, blah. Completely inaccurate kit. They actually have the parts for the early travel lock in here, so you can backdate this to a properly accurate kit without much fuss. Fancy that, so I'll show you how to do that next. Let's move to the front of the Sherman. I've completed the hatches here. Now, they're just dry fitted in, and I probably can't, I'll just pop it open like that. There we go, they're dry fitted in, the fit is so good that uh, the only parts that are glued on there are the obvious parts that are attached to the hatch. So if you want to make these workable, very easy to do. Uh, I'm not going to glue them in, they're, they're nice and tight. Extremely well fitting parts, can't complain at all. Uh, I've put some of the first pieces here on the glasses plate, but before I do, I want to compare what they provide you in the kit, the base kit, 
uh, with his headlight and the lamp guards and so forth that go in here like this with what they give you as photo etch in the um, the detail up stuff so basic photo etch and you're just going to have to bend this um, these major parts here into these not too complicated I might just zoom in there um, Headlight guards. Now, what I've done instead, I, I actually don't think the photo etch is scale accurate. I've just checked my reference photos a minute ago, and I think they're a little bit too thin. And also considering you're going to have to add some weld beads to, to this, it might be a bit tricky. It's easier with the plastic. I'll see if I can hold this clear uh, and see what I've done. So what I've done is on the left-hand side, it's not, no, it's not mold problems. On the left-hand side, I've just spent a few minutes thinning that. Okay, so the right-hand side is the kit part. Oh, well, here's the original part without me getting into it. Uh, and I've just used a file for some of the small bits, a diamond file there. If I just turn it around so now that the right hand side, it skews my cicadas out in the forest, they're going nuts. So I've been able to get a good radius on there and it more replicates um, sheet metal that's a bit battered around, but it's actually quite thick. It's not as thin as the photo etch, which is obviously, where is it? It's only, you know, that thin. It's, um, got a bit of meat to it because you're gonna to have to put some weld seams on the sides and and so forth so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna um, thin out the entire part and the other the other parts that I've got here so for example the this guard here very easy to do just take your time uh, and not to put too much pressure on the plastic for it to break and just glue them in it's a lot easier than having a bend photo etch and super glue and so forth uh, the only other things I've got left to do is a few headlights and there's a few things on the on the, there's my hand there's a few things on the back of the tank uh, that are photo etched, and where have I got those? They're very simple, if I can get them out of the box. These very simple um, rear headlight guards. Again, they're just good enough. I might put a little bit of, um, might thicken them up a little bit, but yeah, we're almost at the end. Well, the rest of the parts fitted on the front plate. Here's a quick sneak preview. <laughs> uh, it's time to build the gun travel lock. Now, I've left this to the end to show you that Whilst in the instructions they have you build the post-war travel lock, which is a one-piece clasp that goes over the top of the barrel. In fact, they give you the pieces for the actual during World War II. Two-piece lock, like that, which fits in just like that. So instead of using those two pieces, you use the single piece that fits in the cradle. So if you want to make a, uh, you know, a an accurate World War II version, the parts are there. And in fact, you can make this kit out of the box and it is quite accurate. So all the naysayers at the start were a little bit wrong. They weren't completely wrong, but they were a little bit wrong. You can actually, with a small bit of modification looking at the parts, you can make a nice accurate World War II, not a Korean, a World War II Easy 8. So I'm thinking about doing it this way. Uh, and yeah, apart from that, I, had, I lost a part on the, um, I had to make a new one out of sheet star in there, and I've just got the, moving to the end, I've just got to make the photo etch um, brackets to the end there, and it's complete. So let me put together the gun travel lock and we'll finish this part of the video. And there's the gun travel lock all assembled, and on there I uh, put these two mounts in a little bit loose, so don't glue them in either side, just so you can get them into the notches aligned properly, and then push them in nicely to firm them all up and also with the little latch at the top there too don't glue that in straight away put it in loose so you can put it on properly so that's done the uh, brackets at the back here on these lights are done so that's the lower hull all complete and as you can see I've hidden the, the bogies inside I've taken most of the wheels off that don't press fit so yeah it's all done apart from they tell you in the instructions to put spare tracks on the side I may not do that on mine um, They've got the holes there for them, so I, st I still may do that. And uh, yeah, so it's off with this one, and then it's time to assemble the turret, and that'll be the last of my regular builds, build series for this until we get to doing some more detailing. So thanks for watching.